Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, I want to talk again about how I think September could be cooler for the most part in the central and eastern United States. Now, before I get into the video, I would ask that you do subscribe, leave a like down below, and comment down below. Leave a comment down below, that helps out so much. Give me your thoughts on the current weather or this video, anything like that. I appreciate it greatly. For today's comment of the day, I want to know when September is all said and done, do you think it will go down as a cooler month or a warmer month in the central and eastern United States? Let me know in the comments down below and I will be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we're taking a look at teleconnection. Sorry to bore you guys, I know some people don't like this, but we're going to really quickly just break this down. This is our Pacific North American Oscillation or PNA. Here's our GFS model and look at it, it just keeps it positive, it kind of bounces off that uh, neutral line as you can see but it, it stays positive for the most part here on the GFS model and in a positive PNA that encourages warmer than normal conditions on the west coast which therefore allows cold air to move into the central and eastern United States. We're currently in a positive PNA so you can kind of get a feel for what kind of pattern that allows for. We had that big cool down obviously uh, just a few days ago and that was mostly due to the PNA being in its positive phase. So there you go. Here's our European model though, and as you can see, it is positive for now, and it is going to be uh, through the week next week, but as you can see, it goes far negative at about Sunday, and then last through uh, the middle portion of the week after that. So that's a huge difference there, the GFS keeping it positive the whole time, the European going negative eventually, which would encourage warmer temperatures in the east. Very interesting. Here's our Arctic oscillation according to both of these models as well. In its negative phase, we see colder than normal conditions move in from Canada, Hence why we could see some Arctic blasts, usually a negative AO, allows for uh, some of that Arctic air to make its way all the way from Canada to the United States. By the way, my definition of an Arctic blast is any sort of Arctic air mass that moves from Canada. Uh, a lot of people usually are like, this isn't an Arctic blast. It, for me, it doesn't have to be 20 degrees for it to be an Arctic blast. It's more about the severity of the amount of cold air being shoved down from Canada. If it's coming from the Arctic regions, it's an Arctic blast in my opinion. Uh, and usually that allows for very potent cold air, but obviously you can't see 20s and 30s this time of year. But in my opinion, you can see an Arctic blast. Let me know how you feel about that down below. I'd be curious to see if anybody disagrees. But the GFS keeps this very negative, allowing for those Arctic blasts and Arctic blasts to move in. European model, though, does have it positive in the short range, negative in the medium range, but then again, positive in the long range, which allows for that Arctic blast for the late portion of the next week. But then again, it's kind of blocking out the opportunity for very cold air to move in there at the very beginning and very end of this forecast period. Again, huge difference between the GFS and the European model here. Um, European looking a lot warmer, and then the GFS is looking a lot colder. And, and on paper here, here's how that would kind of match up. Here's the GFS model in the long range, and as you can see, a massive Arctic blast in the eastern United States. Those blues within the greens are indicating 15 to 30 degrees below normal, very potent cold air with those warmer than normal temperatures out west. Again, this model consistently keeps us in a positive PNA. That is that out west, as you can see. And then here's the European model in the long range of very warm temperatures in the east. Uh, still warm in the west too, but not quite as warm as the east. So there's a massive difference, obviously, in the long range between these two models. Uh, we're going to talk about what the GFS is showing in today's video uh, and go over that, but keep in mind my confidence is very low because we have one model that is very on board and one model that is very off board with this kind of solution here. Uh, but I did want to show it because I found it interesting and a bit exciting, but again, it's a lower confidence probability, so keep that in mind throughout this video. All right, now what we're going to do in a moment is move on and start talking about that pattern. We're going to move day by day and just take a look at the temperature anomalies in just a moment. All right, now here is a buy time to reach about 1 p.m. here on Monday, September 6th. And as you can see, some colder air is already in the area for the eastern United States. We do see a bit of a southeast ridge, which is going to make Labor Day very nice along the eastern seaboard. The one day I was hoping to be warm out of probably the entire month of September at this point is Labor Day. I mean, I really want it to be hot. We have a pool, so obviously it's going to be nice to be able to get out there in the pool. If it's if it's cold outside, yeah, not doing it. You know, that cold wind hitting you uh, when you're wet and in the pool, not a good combo there. Uh, so for those of you that have a pool, I'm sure you feel the same way. For those of you that don't 
have a pool. I'm sure you want it to be warm, but definitely not hot. I hate when it's so hot, but there's no water to get in. That is absolutely the worst. Uh, but it seems like it's going to be mostly 80s along the eastern seaboard. Maybe if you move down to South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, it might be 90s. Uh, but it's going to be very pleasantly warm, bordering on hot for a lot of the eastern seaboard. And even some of these lighter blue regions, you're probably going to be in the lower 80s, upper 70s. So it's still going to be really nice as well. Let's go ahead and move this towards Thursday, September 9th. We're taking a huge jump here. And we see another cooldown move into the eastern United States. And according to our GFS model, this time around, it actually does get those cooler temperatures along the eastern seaboard. And it's important to note that between the 1st and the 15th of September, your average temperature has probably gone down by a few degrees, which is very exciting. So let's say your average high temperature is 85 on September 1st. You're probably looking at like 82 is your average temperature. So these below normal temperatures mean more. Uh, and the model does take that into account. It does take into account your average temperatures for your location. So, you know, these below normal temperatures are going to take you even further uh, and even colder than they would have on September 1st by the time we're taking a look at September 9th. September 12th here, we're taking a look at this and we see very warm temperatures out west. Again, we took a look at the PNA chart in the beginning for this GFS model. And this one had a very persistent positive PNA for the month of September. And that is that positive PNA out west. You can see those very warm temperatures out there. That is a classic positive PNA. We see a big cooldown moving into the central United States actually by this point on September 12th. That's going to be a Sunday. We see some warmer temperatures but not too far above normal in the eastern United States. One or two degrees above normal which by the time we're taking a look at September 12th uh, it's not going to be that hot. Now by the time I reach September 15th that cooldown comes to an end. We see another one moving in for the upper Midwest. Again, still very hot out west, and that's going to allow for these constant cooldowns to keep moving into the eastern United States, cold fronts, things of that nature. Uh, very warm for the southeastern United States and a lot of the eastern United States for the most part here on September 15th. But by time we take a look at September 17th, a lot of that cooler air has moved into the New England, the Northeast states, the Mid-Atlantic states, the Ohio Valley. The Southeast is holding on to those near normal conditions by this point, uh, but the further north you go, the further below normal it gets. It's also important to note we see a big cooldown moving in through Montana, North Dakota, and Wyoming by this point. That is going to be a very potent cooldown that moves in in just a moment, what we're going to take a look at. So what we're going to do is move on and take a look at that. And by the time we're reaching September 18th, we will see that big cooldown move into the central and eventually eastern United States. So stay tuned to take a look at all of that. And the two models disagreeing lowered my confidence enough, but we are taking a look at some very long range things as well. We're getting a little wild in today's video. I'm going to warn you guys, you'll see on our confidence tab that I'm, I'm adjusting for that for sure on the confidence tab, but we're getting kind of crazy today. We're taking a look at some very low confidence things, mostly for entertainment purposes uh, and just to see if it happens. It always gets me excited uh, for the cooler air, so I love to take a look at these potential big fall-like cooldowns because if, if this one really does move in, you are going to feel very fall-like temperatures for a lot of the central and eastern United States, 70s, 60s for a lot of folks in the high temperatures. I can't wait for those types of temperatures. October and November can't get here soon enough in my opinion, although I do want to savor these fall months as well. So it's kind of a toss up for me, but this is by time we are taking a look at September 18th at about uh, 1 or 2 p.m. there on Saturday. Again, your average temperature has moved down even further by this point. Uh, during these months, our average temperatures are dropping like a rock because obviously by the time we're taking a look at or sorry, December, our average temperature is going to be super, super, super low for the high temperatures, you know. 30 to 40 degrees lower than our high temperature during August. So it has to drop about 10 to 10 or more degrees on average per month. Take that into account, obviously. Now, all of these greens, you're taking a look at 10 to 15 degrees below normal if this was to occur. And then those kind of purplish blues within the greens, that's where we're taking a look at about 15 to 30 degrees below normal for the Ohio Valley, upper Midwest, and Great Lakes. This would definitely be an Arctic blast, in my opinion, if this was to occur this way. Uh, because that is going to take you far below your, your average temperatures, and it would probably be bordering on cold uh, by this point, according to my Virginia standards at least. You guys might not think it's cold, but to me it would be. Uh, we see a bit of a southeast ridge trying to hold on, but it, it, it has no match for this, to be honest, because we see by time of reach about uh, September 19th here, uh, that cool down really moves into the eastern United States and beats out that southeast ridge, bringing those 
greens and even the, the deeper blues into the eastern United States. And this even holds on till about uh, Monday, September 20th at the end of the model run. And we don't really know what would happen after this, but we can see there is still a positive PNA according to this model in the extremely long range forecast. This has about a 5% chance or less chance of actually looking this way, by the way, once we're taking a look at this range. 378 hours out should be a red flag, and it is a red flag. Again, we're getting a little wild today. We're taking a look at extremely low probability things, but I think it is important to note that the GFS has this, this pattern persisting, and if there is one valuable thing to take away, it is that the GFS model does keep this positive PNA, negative AO pattern persisting through uh, the middle to late portion of the month of September, and that does mean something. That is a little higher confidence. When we see a model calling for something like that, that is something that we can take a look at a little longer range. But these individual hourly outlooks for the temperature anomalies, you know, the probability of this actually looking exactly like this is near nothing. So keep that in mind. Obviously, the more specific you get, the lower chance of it actually looking that way in the longer range. For today's confidence tab, appropriately, we are at a two out of six. The only reason we're at a two and not a one is because of the negative AO, positive PNA pattern. We do have a little bit of confidence in that. Uh, but the longer range temperature, you know, actual outlook, uh, that's, a, that's a very low confident thing. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday about that Gulf tropical system in there. And James Marr said, I think it will be a very weak tropical storm. And I'm sure James Marr thinks that's if anything, because at this point, we don't know if it will even develop. Uh, but I have to agree, I think it's going to move a little too quickly. I think it's it's taking a beating from the land right now. I obviously gave you guys um, the insight that this one could possibly beat out the land interaction and really still, I guess, really just break out and still have an easy time developing. But it didn't at this point. To this point, it did not do that. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalasa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary, John Calisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron entry in the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Cat Bite as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.